Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today we will go through the NICE guideline on headaches and I will summarize the guidance from a primary care perspective only. So let's jump into it. We will start by looking at the diagnostic clinical features that could help differentiate between tension type headache, migraine and cluster headache. First, we have the pain location, which in tension headache is usually bilateral. In migraine can be unilateral or bilateral, and in cluster headache it is unilateral, usually around the eye, above the eye, and along the side of the head or face. Then we look at the pain quality, which in tension headache is usually pressing or tightening and non-pulsating. In migraine is generally pulsating, although it can be described as throbbing or banging in those aged 12 to 17 years. And in cluster headache it is variable, sharp, boring, burning, throbbing or tightening. The pain intensity is mild or moderate in tension headache, whereas it's moderate or severe in migraine and severe or very severe in cluster headache. In terms of the effect on activities, we find that tension headache is usually not aggravated by routine activities. Migraine is generally aggravated by or causes the avoidance of routine activities and cluster headache causes restlessness or agitation. Looking at other possible symptoms, we find that tension headaches doesn't usually have any. Migraine usually produces sensitivity to light and or sound or nausea and vomiting. There can also be aura symptoms, which we will cover in more detail later. And cluster headache will normally present on the same side of the headache, either a red or watery eye, nasal congestion or runny nose, swollen eyelid, forehead and facial sweating, constricted pupil and or drooping eyelid. And finally, in terms of duration of the headache, tension headaches can be from 30 minutes to continuous, Migraine can be usually 4 to 72 hours in adults, but 1 to 72 hours in younger people, 12 to 17 years of age. And cluster headache usually lasts 15 minutes to 180 minutes. Episodic tension type headaches or episodic migraines occur on fewer than 15 days per month. Chronic tension type headaches or chronic migraines occur on 15 or more days per month for more than 3 months. Chronic migraine and chronic tension type headache commonly overlap, so if there are features of migraine, we will diagnose chronic migraine. On the other hand, episodic cluster headaches occur from once every other day to eight times a day with a pain-free period of more than one month. Chronic cluster headaches have the same frequency, that is from once every other day to eight times a day, but with a pain-free period of less than one month in a 12-month period. And now let's have a look at migraine with aura in more detail. And we will suspect aura with or without headache if the symptoms are fully reversible and develop gradually over at least 5 minutes and last for 5 to 60 minutes. And typical aura symptoms include visual symptoms that may be positive, for example flickering lights, spots or lines, and or negative, for example, partial loss of vision. Sensory symptoms that may be positive, for example, pins and needles, and or negative, for example, numbness, and speech disturbance. We can diagnose migraine with aura if typical aura symptoms are present, but we will consider further investigations and referral if the symptoms are atypical, such as motor weakness, double vision, visual symptoms affecting only one eye, poor balance or decreased level of consciousness. We will suspect menstrual-related migraine if it's mostly between two days before and three days after the start of menstruation in at least two out of three consecutive menstrual cycles. And now we will touch on medication overuse headache, which we will consider if taking the following drugs for three months or more that is, triptans, opioids, ergots or combination analgesics on 10 days a month or more, or paracetamol, aspirin or an NSAID on 15 days per month or more. In terms of management of all headache disorders, we will consider further investigations and referral if there are worrying symptoms or signs, such as worsening headache with fever, 
thunderclap headache or a sudden onset headache with maximum intensity within five minutes, new onset neurological deficit, new onset cognitive dysfunction, change in personality, impaired level of consciousness, recent head trauma within the past three months, headache triggered by cough, valsalva, sneeze or exercise, orthostatic headache or headache that changes with posture, symptoms suggested of giant cell arthritis, giving rise to symptoms of headache, visual disturbances and jaw claudication, symptoms and signs of acute narrow angle glaucoma, which may include headache with a painful red eye and misty vision or halos, and in some cases nausea. Acute glaucoma may be differentiated from cluster headache by the presence of a semi-dilated pupil compared with the presence of a constricted pupil in cluster headache and a substantial change in the headache. We will also consider further investigations and referral if there's new onset headache with compromised immunity, for example by HIV or immunosuppressive drugs, age under 20 years and history of malignancy, a history of malignancy known to metastasize to the brain, and vomiting without other obvious cause. If we want to consider a headache diary, it should be followed for a minimum of eight weeks. Now let's have a look at the acute and prophylactic treatments of the various types of headaches. For the acute treatment of tension type headache, we will consider aspirin, paracetamol or an NSAID, but we will not offer opioids, and because of Rye's syndrome, aspirin should not be offered to under-16s. For the prophylactic treatment of tension type headache, we will consider a course of up to 10 sessions of acupuncture over 5 to 8 weeks. For the acute treatment of migraine, with or without aura, we will offer a combination of an oral triptan and an NSAID, or an oral triptan and paracetamol. If aged 12 to 17 years, we will consider a nasal triptan in preference to an oral preparation, for example, nasal somatriptan. And for people who prefer to take only one drug, we will consider monotherapy with an oral triptan, NSAID, aspirin 900 mg or paracetamol. We will not offer ergot or opioids for the acute treatment of migraine, but we will consider additional antiemetic even in the absence of nausea and vomiting. If oral preparations or nasal preparations, if aged 12 to 17 years, are ineffective or not tolerated, we will consider a non-oral preparation of metoclopramide or procloperacin, for example, bacalpocloperacin. And we will consider adding a non-oral NSAID or triptan if they have not been tried before. And following a recent update, NICE says that we can use the drug Rimejepant only if at least two triptans have been tried before but were ineffective, or if triptans cannot be used and paracetamol and NSAIDs are not effective. For migraine prophylaxis, we will advise that riboflavin, 400 mg once a day, may be effective for some people and that this is available as a food supplement. We will also offer topiramate or propranolol and we will consider amitriptyline, but we will not offer gabapentin. We will then review the need for continuing migraine prophylaxis after six months. When prescribing migraine prophylaxis, we will consider the risk of fetal malformations with topiramate, discuss the risk of reduced effectiveness of hormonal contraceptives with topiramate, explain the importance of effective contraception with topiramate, for example by using medroxyprogesterone acetate depot injection, an intrauterine method, or combined hormonal contraception with the barrier method, bearing in mind that we will not routinely offer combined hormonal contraceptives if there is migraine with aura, and we will use caution when prescribing propranolol if there is a history of depression, as they could be at increased risk of using propranolol for self-harm. If both topiramate and propranolol are unsuitable or ineffective, we will consider a course of up to 10 sessions of acupuncture over 5 to 8 weeks. For menstrual-related migraine, we will consider frovaptriptan, 2.5 mg twice a day, or somiltriptan, 
2.5 milligrams twice or three times a day on the days migraine is expected. And for the treatment of migraine during pregnancy, we will offer paracetamol, but we may consider a tryptan or an NSAID after discussing the risks during pregnancy. And we will seek specialist advice for migraine prophylaxis during pregnancy. For the acute treatment of cluster headache, we will discuss with a specialist the need for neuroimaging for people with the first bout of cluster headache. And we will then offer oxygen and or a subcutaneous or nasal tryptan. When using oxygen for the acute treatment of cluster headache, we will use 100% oxygen at a flow rate of at least 12 litres per minute with a non-rebreathing mask and a reservoir bag and we will arrange provision of home and ambulatory oxygen. When using a subcutaneous or nasal tryptan, we will prescribe an adequate supply calculated according to their history and on the manufacturer's maximum daily dose. And we will not offer paracetamol, NSAIDs, opioids, ergots or oral tryptans for cluster headache. As prophylactic treatment of cluster headache, we will consider verapamil and the BNF says that it should be initiated under specialist supervision, including advice on ECG monitoring. And we will seek specialist advice if it does not respond or during pregnancy. For medication overuse headache, we will explain that it is treated by withdrawing the overused medication and we will advise to stop overused medications for at least one month and to stop abruptly rather than gradually. We will also explain that the headache is likely to get worse before it gets better and we will provide them with close follow-up and support, considering prophylactic treatments for the underlying primary headache disorder. We will consider specialist referral and inpatient management for people who are using strong opioids or have relevant comorbidities or if previous attempts have been unsuccessful. We will then review the diagnosis and management four to eight weeks after stopping overused medication. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice and it is only my summary and my interpretation of the guideline. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.